Hey guys, it is Taylor. What's up? Now that I don't do this all the time, I feel like I'm just like low-key judging the intros that I used to do and I don't know how to talk, but whatever, I'm here. I'm, I'm putting in the work. I believe I addressed this at multiple points in the video and in other videos that I'm filming right now as well. Please ignore my sunburn. I didn't know I had it until I woke up this morning and here we are. But anyway, today I wanted to bring you something that a couple people have been asking me about on my Instagram. I feel so dumb saying that because I know I'm not a big YouTuber. I know I'm not really even a YouTuber at all. Pretty much I just like every once in a while get a hankering to make a video and I'm like, hey, here's this. But basically sometimes I'll post on my Instagram stories and someone will be curious about something and then I suddenly get the urge to make another video. So that is what happened this time. I have recently been trying out soap brows, which I don't know what took me so long to get on the bandwagon. These have been around for years and I was just always like, nah, I don't know. And then quarantine happened and I was like, you know what? I'm going to try it and I'm going to see what all the fuss is about. And I actually really love it. I've been trying to grow out my brows a lot more and let them be fuller and healthier um, and just kind of let them do their thing during this when I don't need to have them like super um, plucked or perfected or anything like that. But I feel like this is a great way to have them nice and grown out and fluffy and natural and still have a nice defined clean looking brow. So today I'm going to be showing you my soap brow routine. This is for all the people on my Instagram story who requested, um, not requested a tutorial, but who asked me to show them how to do it. This is for you. It's very easy, I promise. And if you already do your brows at all and you also bathe, you should probably have these ingredients hanging around your house somewhere. So let's go ahead and get into it and I will show you my current soap brow routine. What am I doing with my hands? I look like T-Rex. All right, so you are nice and close. I'm actually going to be kind of probably getting even closer eventually, but this is what my eyebrows look like right now. They've definitely grown a lot since um, like quarantine started and stuff. I realized that I'd always identified as having like super bushy brows, which I, I do um, normally, but I'd just gotten to the point where I was like waxing them so often and trying to clean them up so much that they were literally getting so tiny and I kind of had like a, an early 2000s sperm brow moment. They weren't like rounded in the front, they weren't that kind of brow I guess, but they were just so tiny so thankfully They've gotten to a really nice spot where they're nice and thick. I have been using this castor oil on them. I've been using this one right here. Um, it just comes with a little dropper and I just put a little bit of that in my eyebrows. I put that in at night right before I go to bed and it's just been conditioning them really nicely and kind of keeping them in a good spot. So there are two main elements that you're going to need um, when doing the soap brows. The first thing is obviously a clear soap. Um, this is the kind that I got after watching some other videos of people doing soap brows. This one always came highly recommended. Um, and it's a nice, it's clear and it's also like an orangey tone. So it doesn't really come off looking like anything in your brow. Um, you want to get a clear one because, or like at least some kind of like, translucent something um, because if you get like one of the milky ones or something it can kind of leave a white cast in your brow so this is what the bar looks like mine obviously has been used a little bit so it's a little bit gunky but that is the soap that I use mm, that's like a really nice ASMR sound the second thing you're going to need is a little spoolie brush so you can use whichever one works best for you this is the one from elf um, and it's just the one I've been using because I'm too cheap to buy a new one but I like these pretty well I picked them up when I was doing makeup for clients um, for different things for a little bit there and so um, I just had quite a few of these lying around gave them a nice alcohol bath um, and you know disinfected everything and now I've been using them for various different brow things so I use them to you know put the castor oil in my brows I use them for lash stuff and now I'm using them for soap brows but that's literally those are the two things that you need you don't really need a lot of supplies for this and then what I do, I also then use Fix Plus as like the thing that I spray with. A lot of people use water as well. I was low-key too lazy to go to the sink every single time I needed to do my brows. But also I kind of like the idea of having it be like a setting spray or something like that that is a little bit more prone to like increase the longevity of your makeup rather than water which is just kind of there so i've been using fix plus you can use water you can use any setting spray that you have i wouldn't recommend doing like a like a super dewy spray so like i have the catrice illuminating prime and fine i wouldn't use something like that i just use like um, an urban decay all nighter or a fix plus or something like that so what i'm going to do i'm hoping that this is going to stay properly in focus because i had to turn my autofocus off it was like kept going in and out um but what i'm going to do is i'm going to take a little bit of the fix plus i'm just going to spray it on my brush a couple spritzes and then i'm just going to dig it right in here and 
A lot of people say that it takes some trial and error to figure out how much soap you want on your brush. I didn't find that it took me that long um, because basically if you get a little bit too much, you just like wipe it off. Um, but you do you. So I'm just gonna kind of rub that brush around in the soap a little bit until it's worked up and built up a little bit in the brush. You'll be able to see the brush all kind of gunkified like this, so you'll see that it starts getting a little bit of the soap buildup. And once it gets like that, you are at a pretty good spot. I just kind of like to twirl it around a couple of times to get any excess off. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this, I'm gonna have to reposition. I'm gonna take this directly into my brow and start moving these hairs. I kind of like to do the front ones kind of upward and a little bit angled to the side. And I'm just gonna do that. And then as I get to these ones, I start working it to more of like a full sideways because what I'm really aiming to do here is to fill in this little gap in my brow a little bit more. And then towards the back, I'm just gonna kind of do those out. So definitely upward in the front and then I move to kind of outward. I see a lot of people do just kind of like straight up all over, but I just find that for the particular shape of my brow that doesn't work as well. And then what I'm gonna do because you can see it's kind of like crazy in the top here. I'm just gonna take my brush and kind of swipe it this way to clean up that shape a little bit. And then sometimes I'll do that around here. It depends on how long and stray looking those are. And that's literally it. Um, that's the base of the brow. So now it's ready for product. Um, as you can see, I do still have those little bald spots. I don't know if the other hairs will ever grow long enough to actually like cover that. Um, but that's something that I've always dealt with. That's why I started filling my brows in the first place was because I had that. So not super worried. And so then there may be a couple little things that I want to tweak, but for the most part, that is kind of the shape that I like to start with. And I'm always kind of like re-combing out the little tail pieces until I get them to the shape that I like. That one's surprisingly easy. You can see I have a nice bold brow. So yeah, now I'm going to go ahead and do the other side. So again, I'm gonna spritz my brush. I don't do it quite as much the second time around because obviously it already has a little bit on it. And I'm gonna take a little bit of soap. Sorry if you hear my AC. I know some people turn their AC off when they're filming, but it is like a million degrees right now. So I don't feel like it. Okay, and then I'm gonna do the same thing on this one. I'm gonna take the spot of the brush that has kind of the most soap in it and I'm gonna start in the front section. Those are the ones that are, I think, the hardest to tame because they are also kind of like, as you brush them that way, it's very much defying gravity and like that's not where they naturally wanna go. So I definitely like to work the most product into that area. And then I just kind of go along and make the shape that I want. So like I said, almost directly up and a little bit angled on the front is kind of what works best for me. Some people do straight up and it looks really good. I just find that it doesn't look as good on my brows specifically. And then I come over here to the side and you'll kind of see a nice line start to develop. Oh, uh, actually it actually doesn't maybe look as clean on camera, but you'll see a nice line start to develop that you can kind of identify as like the cleaned up line that you want to use on your brows. So, you know, as I go, I can see a nice normal shape develop. And then that's where I use this and kind of swipe it that way to clean that line up a little bit. I'm trying to like do this and also have it angled in my mirror properly. Let me try putting this here. This one, I find the tops aren't as thick, so I do have a little bit more trouble here making them go exactly where I want them because on the other one, I have so much kind of curve at the top that I have the room for, but I feel like this one, I don't know if I just trimmed it too much or oh, it's been a while since I've trimmed them or if it's just not as thick at the top, but I do find I have more like sparse tops where it doesn't make as clean of a line. Over here you can see a very like kind of clean line where my brow kind of curves over, whereas over here it feels a little more bald towards the top, which makes it feel kind of patchy, but that is where filling comes in, so I'll be fine. I do have obviously some little stray brow hairs underneath. Like I said, right now I'm trying to let them grow, and then as I decide where they need to be and what needs to be shaped in a certain way for my brow. Um, once I get to kind of like the completed product, then I can tweeze them, but I'm trying so hard not to right now. Who knew it would have taken a pandemic for me to literally just like completely up my brow game. So this is really the base. This is kind of what they look like. Um, you can see that they're definitely fluffier, more separated. They have a much better shape, but I still have my little bald spots. Oh, sorry, my brush looks so funny. I'm like wiping the soap off of it. Um, that is something I do at the end as well. I just kind of like spin around my spoolie in a um, paper towel. 
that way it's just a little bit cleaner doesn't have quite so much soap residue um, but yeah so this is kind of the shape that I start with you can see I do still have my bald spots and little things like that but definitely I have a much more uniform shape to the brows and then it's so much easier to go in and just like flick out the little pieces that I want to so that is what we're doing next if you have perfectly shaped brows already this might be enough for you and you might have just needed to like separate and fluff them this is not enough for me though with my sparse areas so then I'm going to take the Anastasia brush um, I can never remember what number this brush is because there's two of them and there's one that I like better than the other so I've been going back and forth doing this with the Anastasia brow Wiz. I don't love the what is it even called I don't even remember the other Anastasia brow pencil um, I don't love that. I don't like the shape of it. It's a little bit too thick for me. I do like the very thin shape of the brow whiz, but I am sticking to my tried and true Anastasia pomade in dark brown and then her brush as well. So I'm just gonna dip in a little. What I like to do is I like to get like a teeny tiny glob on the end of my brush and then put it on my hand on the back of my hand just to kind of heat it up a little bit, make it a little more workable. I kind of swirl my brush around in there to pick up a little bit and then I slide to get the excess off and I sometimes will even like dab it on a paper towel as well. I only dab on the sides though so that way I'm not removing product from like the tip of the brush. Okay again with the camera angle and the focus we'll have to make sure that this is still working but okay so then I'm just gonna make little hair like strokes in the shape of the brow focusing on filling in this little bald spot here but still maintaining the shape and style of my actual hairs and kind of like where they're going and I can never decide if I want to use my regular spoolie or if I want to use the one that I was using for the soap I kind of stick to the soap one just so it doesn't get gross on other things now this is actually where it might be handy to have both as an option um, like for filling in both the pomade and the thing because right about here I need some little bitty strokes that just fill in this area and I feel like I do have a little more control with the pen. And I'm just gonna continue to brush this out to blend it a little bit. Grab a little more pomade on my brush. And then I'll ever so slightly still kind of carve out the shape that I want. The problem is sometimes you do have quite a bit of soap residue on your skin. So you gotta make sure your brush is decently loaded. That's not that hard. Okay, so that one feels pretty good. Just gonna do a little bit right here. I did not have any product on my brush just then. The very last thing I do with these is, and I haven't seen people do this stuff, I don't know if just nobody talks about it or what, but I do get quite a bit of soap residue like when I'm brushing it, I'll get it in the skin around it and then sometimes it'll make a funny line from my like concealer or my foundation or something like that. So what I do is I just take a Q-tip and some micellar water Kind of the same way I would normally clean up my brows, except I'm much more careful not to get it on the actual hairs. I'm just gonna come around in the blank spaces and make sure that there's no soap residue above or below. So this is also a good chance to clean up any spots. So like sometimes this spot will get a little bit too, I'll get a little over enthusiastic and have a little too much. So I just kind of come around and wipe it off. It also helps identify places where you might want just a little bit more or a different shape or something like that. Definitely helps me with the tail ends once they're not just a giant ball of glue. Or glue, God, soap. I hope I haven't been saying glue this whole time. I'm gonna look like a dumbass. Now, the thing that I will do is sometimes I'll obsess about these for hours and try to like get everything perfect really up close, but the reality is far away they look great and no one's gonna be as close to my face as I am right now, literally being like <gasps> So, all right, I'm gonna do the other one. It's gonna be the same process. I'm just gonna take a little bit of the pomade and just kind of start filling in. All right, so coming back, this is what the brows look like without any other makeup or anything. I just love how it separates the individual hairs so it just looks nice and fluffy and full. I just have to fill in a little bit in the tail and then I'm kind of ready to go. I'm still getting the hang of how to do this on like a really quick pinch. Um, sometimes it does take me a little while to perfect it, but I'm definitely getting there. So this is what they look like without anything. I am going to go ahead and do my like full face of makeup and then show you what it looks like all together. Um, but that face makeup will also be in another video so if it's already up I will link it down below I don't know which one's going up first um, but once it is up I will have it linked down below and up in a card but anyway 
I'm gonna go do my face makeup and then we will come back in for a check-in so you can see kind of what it looks like all put together with my summer makeup. So this is what the brows look like all finished with all the rest of my makeup on. I love how they look. I think especially with a kind of more natural makeup look, I think that they offer a nice natural brow, but still definitely like defined, filled in, polished, that kind of thing. But it gives it a little more fluff to it. It gives it a little more body and a little more life. Um, and it definitely is a great way to make the most of your natural brows if you have a fluffier brow or to add a little bit of volume if you have a not so fluffy brow it kind of fluffs it for you. I'm so glad that I finally started doing something like this. I feel like I've been so hard on my brows for so many years and they're really thriving right now. So I'm really glad that I found this and decided to actually try it instead of just being like, what? Soap brows, what? Thank you to all of you who asked on my Instagram what this new brow routine that I'd been talking about was um, and were curious about it. When I say those of you who asked me, obviously I know I'm not a big YouTuber. I know that it wasn't tons of people asking me, but I've had some friends asking me about the brow routine. So I hope that you enjoyed this and found it useful. If you are also trying the soap brows, please DM me because I wanna see them because I know you're gonna look cute. And with that, I believe this video is over. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you did like it or found it useful or if you just like me as a person, potentially, please like, subscribe, comment, um, all of those things that people do when you have a YouTube channel. Thank you guys so much for spending a little time with me today and I will see you next time. Bye!